Hello, hello, and welcome to episode four of the Creative Pause. Um, this is a daily video series that um, we started in a time of solitude and fear. We decided to be cultivating joy, love, and connection. I am Susan Padrone, and I am here with my co-host. I'll let her introduce herself. <laughs> I'm Stacy Fay. I'm a jeweler, so I like beautiful things, which is why I'm very excited for today's episode <laughs> with uh, Rebecca DePasquale. Um, and yeah, as Susan said, we're, our real goal here is to provide some respite in your day, something that brings you joy, something that helps you stay mindful and happy, um, or as happy as you can be in this time that we're all navigating. So um, we always start with a check-in. And the reason for this is because we want to acknowledge the space we're all in. Um, some are having better days than others, but we're all in a space of navigating this enormous <laughs> sort of um, circumstance we're in. And so um, we wanted to just do a check-in, see how you're doing. Uh, we do this on each episode. And I say a little bit, uh, Susan says a little bit, and, and also um, Rebecca will share a little bit about how she's doing. We encourage anybody who is listening to chime in on chat about how their day is going today. Um, and if you're listening to this recording, to just take a moment to journal or even just say aloud um, or think for a moment about how your day has been going and maybe also something you're grateful for today, um, even if your day has been a harder one. So I can start first. Um, I'm doing pretty well today, actually. My day started out rough in the morning. I think for a lot of us, the mornings have been harder to kind of get going, but. Um, I definitely went outside today. That really helped try to take in the flowers that are blooming, you know, which ties in with today and um, just feel the sunshine on me and try to be as present as I could be with what nature was giving me today. And that really helped. Um, Susan, how are you doing? Yeah, about, about the same, actually. And it's so funny that you mentioned that you were taking advantage of the, like, the beauty in nature. I, I did the same thing, and I felt so inspired by Kylene's episode yesterday combined with having Rebecca on today. I think I was just, like, looking at all of the beautiful flowers outside that I could possibly, like, taken <laughs> and and it was perfect i took some photos you know again channeling kylie from yesterday and also bringing in rebecca for today but yeah i'm i'm feeling okay today i think the weather is impacting my mood um more so than it did prior to being in quarantine um and i think because so much of my um, ability to feel less isolated comes from being able to go outside and open the windows and like get that just fresh air in. So I, you know, when it is a little bit nicer out or not, or just not raining, <laughs> you know, it, it definitely helps. So we have some lovelies participating in our chat, chat, the. I'll, I'll get it together in our chat <laughs> right now. Sam, they're doing good today, which is fantastic. Yay, thanks for sharing, Kylene. Um, seems like everybody's spirits are, are feeling a little bit higher today, which is good. And uh, Rebecca, did you want to say anything about how you're doing today? Uh, today has been a really nice day, actually. Um, the last couple of days, we've been working on just getting our uh, touchless flower delivery process up and running, getting the studio sanitized, getting schedules put together. So I, I've had uh, a lot of work with the business, which is great because we are a small business. So it's important to me that we, you know, keep normalized as much as possible and keep servicing people with flowers. So I'm excited. Um, and it's been nice to kind of get my hands and, and dig in and some stuff. And um, it's spring to your point, and it's really beautiful out today. So it, it's it's been it's been a good day today. Uh, yeah, so we're we're doing good over here. I got beautiful flowers. <laughs> not a bad day when you're with flowers. Yay, and that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. So the next part of our show that we always like to do is we like to share with you all a quote that our, our guest provided that, you know, really resonates with them. So I'm going to do a quick little screen share. So then I can show you 
the, the wonderful quote that we have for today. It's a quote by Claude Monet. And it says, I must have flowers always and always. I love that. It's just, it's simple, but it's so Mark, beautiful. Mark yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, well, without further ado, we want to introduce Rebecca De Pasquale of Ram Floral. And you can see Rebecca is set up there with an awesome display of flowers. She's gonna do an arrangement for us and talk about the ways that flowers can really uplift our spirits, which I think all of us not only need, but we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis as spring arrives, um, at least in our neck of the woods here on the East Coast. Um, Rebecca and I have known each other for a few years and have done some styled photo shoots and things together. And what I love most about what she does is everything is, of course, romantic and beautiful and, and the colors are incredible. But uh, Rebecca always is able to sort of translate what somebody what somebody's vision is for their day or their event and and translate that into the flowers that they um, that they have. And she does so in really unique ways, like using local florists. Um, like the farm at Oxford and Jigby Flowers and others, uh, which I know is tricky to do oftentimes. A lot of florists don't do that. And she really stands apart in that way. And she uses vintage vessels and, you know, brings in vintage elements and handmade ribbon and other things that really just add the nicest, most beautiful touch to everything that she she brings together. So, oh, geez. Can you call me every morning? Wow. <laughs> I'll be your daily wake up call. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so no, I love Rebecca. She's amazing. And um, this, I believe today is your wor your business anniversary, right? Yes. It's today is it our five-year yeah, business so. anniversary today. We actually moved into our studio um, one year ago today. Sorry, my dog is playing with his toy. <laughs> you hear me That's speaking okay. in the background. He's always a very dog-friendly yeah, web nice. series. <laughs> and anybody that follows me on Instagram has probably seen him, Lucky. I'll, I'll pop him up at some point today. But yeah, today's our anniversary. So April 1st has always been a really kind of uh, special and funny and silly and, and great day for us. So I'm, I'm super happy that I get to do this. And, and you know, even though we're at a, in a time where it's, it's there's a lot of... Um, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of confusion, a lot of information, a lot of lack of information, and um, a lot of people are going through a lot of emotions right now, and uh, human beings, business owners, uh, just everybody is, is impacted at, at so many different levels. So, um, you know, I, I thought that this process, this program was, was such a great idea because it really takes a minute to, um, put you in a positive headspace to uh, think about creative intention and I, people say all the time they're not creative and you know they don't know you know how to be creative but I don't think that you have to you know be a creative in order to channel creativity so um, I kind of just wanted to talk to people about the impact of flowers on um, you know just your mood and how you can use them uh, as intention and as art versus you know putting pressure on yourself to create this beautiful flower arrangement um, that a professional might make but uh, looking at it in a different lens um, really appreciating the products that you're using um, creating memories or remembering positive things related to them uh, looking at the, the fleeting beauty that is flowers we only get to really enjoy them for a short time frame. I'm speaking to, to Mandy today, who's one of my wonderful people that works in the studio, and, and that was one of her biggest points was that, you know, flowers are really special because they are fleeting, and, and you have to kind of covet them, and, and you get excited for them, and um, people have positive memories associated to flowers. I know I'm going to stop my dog from crunching on toys for a second, <laughs> but okay, we're good. Um, so really just, just, you know, attaching things other than a flower to a flower, but there's, there's a, a lot of things that flowers can be, um, and it can kind of create a positive spirit, a positive energy around them. So I'm going to talk to you about the process of creating a basic flower arrangement, something that you can hopefully duplicate from your houses, um, and then maybe putting a different lens kind of on what that arrangement means, other than just something aesthetically pretty to look at, how it really can um, harbor uh, energy and positivity and light and also become 
uh, a coping mechanism and, and a positive uh, thing that you can do uh, to really enjoy the season um, during these kind of more difficult times when we, we can very easily pick up our phones and we can read news stories and, you know, read statistics hoping to find answers that really aren't available or we can, you know, choose to really treat ourselves well and, and take a few minutes and, and maybe not put yourself in that headspace but somewhere more positive. So um, thank you for having me and, and thank you for celebrating my anniversary with me. Um, so I'm gonna talk about some basics of design first and, and essentially what I'm gonna show you is how I would start and build an arrangement with the things that I have available to me. All of the things that I have are local um, and are in season. So whether that's blooming in your yard or in your neighborhood, Please don't commit any crimes on my behalf, but, but thoughtful um, landscaping is never a bad thing. There's some cherry trees at the end of a parking lot near my house, and I don't think anybody would miss a couple pieces. Maybe your grocery store parking lot, we're supposed to stay home as much as possible, but perhaps out on a daily walk, um, you happen across something that's not in somebody's yard, <laughs> and you take a little piece um, to come home with you. That's not bad, um, but I'm hoping that by giving you a few tips, you'll be able to recreate these at home. So um, I have here a beautiful vessel that was given to me as a gift from my friend Eddie Ross. Uh, it's from Morocco, but it really is uh, just a nice bowl shape. And it's something that most people probably have in their home. So um, you can see it's just a nice little teacup shape is also a really, if you wanted to make an arrangement for a friend or neighbor. Um, and then I just have some basic coated chicken wire in here. And this just really gives the stem something that kind of hold on to like an armature instead of trying to place stems into the open space of the cup. So I'm gonna just put the, the chicken wire in there and then I just have some florist tape but really tape is tape you can use scotch tape um, you can use um, if you want to take strips of duct tape just don't damage your your lovely wares from your house and I'm just putting it across the vessel in an X shape and it really just keeps the chicken wire in there so that I can confidently place my stems in there and that's basically it just a little bit of tape and a little bit of chicken wire and now you have something that will hold your stems really nicely and really um, comfortably to give you room to design. Um, it is foam free, uh, the flowers like the fresh water, so this is really great. You just have to keep in mind where you place the house in case it gets bumped, make a little mess, but this is good. Um, I have one that's a little bit large, one that's pre-prepped already, and I just did the same exact thing. There's chicken wire down in there and I just added some water. Um, and then once I have that, I can really start building my arrangement. Um, my good friend Nicole from Texture Florals uh, gave me a great piece of advice and uh, when you're thinking about building arrangement I always say start with your edges and that's something she taught me. So you really just want to start by covering the edge of your vessel um, and that's really where your arrangement's going to begin and you can do that with anything that you have. Um, generally you're going to use your more abundant and your more textural or your greens. You can use a bunch of different stuff. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the product that I have and that we're using. Um, this is cherry, white cherry, and this is from the farm at Oxford. Uh, this is really truly special to me because we actually have this in my bridal bouquet um, almost a year ago. It's almost our one year anniversary. Um, so she gave me some to use today. So it's it's something that makes me incredibly happy um, and it's something that's very sentimental and very sweet and it's really incredibly beautiful and delicate at the same time so hopefully you guys can see how kind of amazing and light and it's so soft and the petals are so delicate um you can't feel them when you touch them which i think is amazing so i always take a minute to appreciate the product to take a sniff smells great if you have allergies don't do that obviously you know that um, and then I'm kind of just thinking about where the best place to place it in the vessel is and then cutting it after that so I'm just going to take a small piece I'm going to cut it and you can always start long and then cut it a little bit shorter and I'm just going to place it along the edge here no just leave this in the way um, but you can see I just started to cover up my edge and you can do that with the cherry you can do that with I don't know what you're saying to me push this forward got it thank you John John's directing, but he's using sign language, and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> um, so I'm going to move some stuff out of the way. So you can probably see this a little bit better. Is that better? Yeah, better. He can see the picture, so I can't. Um, so I'm going to continue to fill the, the vessel. Uh, I have here um, 
some of my begonia and I have been growing this plant for over a year and I was really proud of myself because it's one of those things that I never thought I would be able to keep a house plant alive. And people always say, you're a florist, it's probably, you're probably the prettiest yard. And I'm like, I don't grow anything. I'm already working with it when it's cut. Um, so the fact that I kept any house plant alive is super exciting. So um, I felt like she was, was vibrant and amazing enough that I could steal some of her leaves. So I'm super excited to be able to use my house plant in here, the first house plant that I truly kept alive. And I think the, the cherry color is just so pretty um, and the pattern and the leaves. So they're just a positive connotation with both of those pieces that I'm using. And again, I'm just continuing to cover the edge. Um, again, these are some of my house plant leaves. So, you know, desperate times calls for desperate measures. We do have some amazing local farmers that are growing. Um, but it has been hard on the wholesale market for flowers. Um, a, a lot of flowers that would typically get sold for events are kind of just sitting and dying and being thrown away. So now more important than ever to support flowers. And I appreciate everybody tuning in for this to see that. Um, so I'm going to keep adding some more around the edge. And again, I'm just creating some, some volume in the structure. I'm appreciating what I'm using. I'm excited about the stuff that I have. I have all these positive memories. So we're just infusing this arrangement with just some, some happiness and some goodness and some light. And we're looking at all these pretty things that we have. And I'm gonna put a little, kind of just wanna stick it straight up there. So we'll, we'll work on this later. But I just wanna have this really kind of high, interesting moment here. But I'm gonna keep going back to what I was saying and filling out the edge here. And then I also have, oh, this is an anthurum. So I, when we moved into our house, I bought an anthurum plant from Ikea, and I've done an okay job at treating it well, um, but it puts off these beautiful leaves, so I'm gonna, I, I cut some of those. <laughs> All of my house plants are now naked uh, in the house. <laughs> uh, this is Plancho that we have in the house that I've been growing. Um, I actually picked that up for a wedding um, a little under a year ago, and I cut most of the flowers off of it, but I just love the, foliage so I kept it and um, put it in the window when we moved in and, and it keeps it, it just keeps going and it's really beautiful so I'm really proud of its kind of resilience that I, I tried to cut it down um, and it, it still wouldn't it still wouldn't go and, and it still stays so I'm gonna use that again here and I'm gonna kind of group them together and again I'm just covering the edge up so now I have a pretty good you can see most of the edge of the vessel is covered. I try to bring things down over the line. So I'm putting things in an angle and that's where the, the chicken wire is really helpful that way. Um, it kind of just holds the stems where you want them to be. Excuse me. Um, and now I'm gonna add some volume in the middle. And I'm going back to this cherry. One, because I have a lot of it and two, because it's really, really beautiful. It makes me super happy. So, so far our arrangement has my bridal flowers in there. It has plants from my house that make me happy and that I'm proud of. Now I'm going to use some of my favorite flowers in the whole world. These are hellebore, helebore, a couple different ways to say it. Um, they're also known as the Lenten rose or the winter rose and I truly love these because um, they're typically the first flower that you see in spring and you'll see them pop up and you'll see the foliage all year usually but the flowers are so sort of early in the year and it's kind of that that you know, it's, it's almost my Puxatawney Phil <laughs> groundhog moment when I start to see, um, see the hellebore come up. It means that spring is coming. So I, I'm always super happy to see them. And, and my very kind friend Mara at the farm at Oxford grows lots and lots of beautiful varieties. So she was, she was kind enough to, to give me some. Um, see, this is a beautiful double blooming variety that has all these petals and kind of has these beautiful freckles. Mother Nature is really spectacular. And she makes these amazing things and I just love marveling at their beauty and their, their presence and how precious and amazing they are and appreciating them as I'm putting them into the arrangements. So now when I think about that, I will, um, when I look at that hellebore, I just remember what a happy, wonderful flower and what a resilient, um, moment they are for me in the winter when I'm just in total despair and I think I'm never going to see flowers again for a florist in the middle of winter it's probably the hardest season and then I, I see them in the ground and I see Mara posting with her coming up and it's just it's it just breathes life into my flower heart so super excited whenever I see them something that always makes me happy um, 
we have ranunculus. So these were probably my first crush as a flower. I was just crazy for them. A lot of people really love them. Uh, they have lots and lots of petals and they're really just delicate and they look like tissue paper. Um, and I love them so much. So I'm always really excited to be able to use them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place them. Now the edge of my bowl is covered. Now I'm just placing things in a way that I believe honors them, um, that, that shows their specialness, so that you can see their pretty faces. Um, Sarah Winward is another amazing florist and she talks about letting the product do what the product wants to do. So rather than forcing things into ways that they don't wanna be, it's working with the natural um, movement of the flowers, the natural shapes that you get from them rather than forcing them. So rather than putting this in upside down and hoping that it'll face, so I'm gonna put it in somewhere where it means special, um, somewhere where it makes sense. So it's just honoring that the flower instead of forcing it into a place where it doesn't want it to be. These are beautiful local uh, daffodils that have the juiciest tangerine coral peach centers and they're just really, really beautiful. Um, and when I'm done this arrangement, I will post some pictures on my Instagram. So if you want to follow, if you don't, I'm at Ram Full Coral. Um, and you'll be able to see kind of what the finished product looks like. I'm going to put some poppies in there. I love poppies because they're so delicate and they're so fleeting, but you really have to just love them for the moment that they're there and you can't expect them to be there the next and and they'll devastate you and fall apart just when you think that you condition them and that they'll be okay in that bridal bouquet uh, but then they have these really amazing yellow centers um, that after the petals have fallen away they still look really incredible so they're just a testament to how uh, different forms of flowers uh, beginning and end still you know can be really beautiful um, these are anemones. This one is absolutely gigantic. <laughs> it's really huge. I'll use my head for comparison. Hi. Um, and the basically anemone, like sea anemone, it means a uh, windflower in Greek. And there's some, some really beautiful stories about um, anemone. And I love them as a flower. So even if you don't have a personal attachment to something, um, you can always take a moment to learn more about them, why they're special, the seasonality of them. Um, you know, some of these flowers are only available for a few weeks. Uh, blooming branches we'll only see for a few weeks around here. Um, and it's, it's important to really, again, appreciate them for what they are when you have them, uh, to honor them and to, to love them and create positive memories around them. And we have this gorgeous tulip. And I grew up in an apartment complex and there was always really gigantic tulips. And I remember thinking that they were just Dr. Zeus inside. In reality, I was only about two feet tall. Um, really incredible, but um, I always really loved tulips and they always remind me of my childhood and, and living in that apartment complex with my parents. So um, that's something that always makes me happy. And then suddenly we have an arrangement that's full of marriage and childhood and spring and hope and uh, first love and special moments and the arrangement that maybe could have been just flowers to somebody now has a whole different lens of beauty and intention and love and light behind it. So when I look at it, I'm not just thinking about how beautiful the flowers are. I'm looking at the happy memories and the smells that remind me of my mom in spring and the, um, the way that the flowers used to blow when I was a kid in my grandparents' yard and stuff like that. So it becomes much more than just a flower arrangement. And it's something that um, you know, can put you in a positive headspace for a while and you can think about all those happy memories, but also as you put this into the, the space that you live in, that you carry that with you. Um, and when you look at that arrangement, you remember those really wonderful things. So, um, you know, that's, that's the way I think that people, you know, people that don't do this professionally, but want to enjoy flowers, but don't feel like they're, they're creative enough to do that. There really isn't a rule with your, your memory. There really isn't a rule with your, um, with your heart and with your joy. So, you know, just, just take the things that you love, take the things that are accessible to you and just, uh, love them and enjoy them and put them together in, in a nice vessel and put them in your house somewhere where you can 
look at them and remember good things and feel good about using your hands to get into something other than hand sanitizer <laughs> and just really um, just just appreciate you know what you you have access to and um, the, the specialness of flowers so hopefully that all makes sense <laughs> Like I said, I'll keep, I'll keep working on this a little bit too. If anybody wants to ask any questions about how I do this, the process, John can do some, some close-up action so you can see some of these things we got going on here. This guy won't stay for me. If anybody has any questions, you can uh, write them in the chat and we'll lift them up for, for Rebecca. Um, I know I had a sort of a logistical question, which is where's the best place to get chicken wire? Um, so I usually purchase it, uh, if I can't get it from my wholesaler, I will just buy it in the fencing section at Home Depot, which I, I do believe that they're open. But if you don't want to or don't have access to chicken wire, you can actually use a bundle of sticks. If you want to just take a bunch of sticks and kind of just tape them together um, and then tape them down into the bowl, just little twigs and such, almost, you know, the same width as chicken wire. It's basically just creating armature for the flowers to, to bite onto for the stems to go somewhere. Um, that's really what it comes down to, is just giving yourself a little bit of something to, to put those stems into. Um, but you can use, like I said, you can use, um, and people use moss too, like soaked moss, and they put it in there. That almost acts like a flower foam. Um, it's a little less, the flowers have a little less movement in it. Once you kind of put stuff in there, it's there, but you can use a lot of different stuff. Um, the chicken wire, usually I'll go to Home Depot if I don't get it from a flower wholesaler. Well, Mara, who's on the line, wants to know, how did you learn to make such beautiful things? <laughs> um, like I said, you know, you just fill the edge and you fill the middle and you start figuring it out from there. Um, I, I think that I was always a, a creative and it's just something that, over time and with practice and um, with your own creative lens, you can definitely develop a style. And, and believe me, not all of my arrangements always looked good. I have some pictures. I, I see some things come up in my Facebook memories that are definitely a little bit cringeworthy. But you know, you, you start somewhere and just like any profession, you learn. But um, you know, beauty is also in the eye of the beholder. So you, your work is probably also beautiful, especially if it's intentional and gorgeous and special to you. I don't want anybody to compare. I do do this for a living, so. <laughs> well, I think even aside from the aesthetics of it, that what you were saying about memories attached to it, even yeah. even someone like me who you would think would think that way, I, ne I haven't really thought that way about a lot of flowers or, that either are in my house or right out my front door. Or, it really kind of I wish you guys could yeah. smell this. You know, you just think of spring and you think of, you know, newness and freshness and, and that smell. It just reminds you of, you know, spring break and Easter and bunnies and chocolate eggs and, it's, you know, hyacinth. My mom loved, so I lost my mom about 10 years ago, um, but my mom loved flowers and she loved hyacinth. So I always, whenever I smell a hyacinth, I always think of my mother. Um, and that's so precious to me. That's nothing that anybody could have given me but my mom. And, and you know, flowers, I can have a whole bowl of hyacinth and it's just a whole bowl of happy for me because it makes me think of, of a person that I loved so much and how much she loved them. So it's not just a flower arrangement, it's, it's a memory arrangement, it's a heart arrangement, it's a moment arrangement, it's, it's a life arrangement. So, and when you do that, when you put that together and you put it somewhere in your house, it's beautiful because it's yours and because you did it and it should make you happy. And um, you know, it's a, it's a good way to just kind of blank out and have fun and play with flowers. It's not a bad life. <laughs> Rebecca, I'm just like in awe of what you're creating and everything that you've been saying. I'm just like, oh my gosh. I just, hey. <laughs> so beautiful. And yeah, like, like Stacy said, I, I never, I think for me, my, my insecurities surrounding um, just floral arrangement in general have probably been the biggest block in even yeah. getting to the point of thinking like, oh, I could create something so special with 
setting all of those intentions and putting the memories into the arrangement as well. Like I just blew my mind in the, the best way. So thank you so much for sharing that. In addition to sharing your beautiful gifts, like I felt like it was a type of meditation, just like watching you, like putting all the different. <laughs> like just unboxing videos on YouTube. Like I think I can get like millions of viewers and millions of dollars. <laughs> Yeah. Except like, what? Yeah, way better. <laughs> yeah, I love it. This is fun, and I mean, and I, I, you know, I didn't know what this was gonna look like when I started. I just tried to pick things that were were special to me, and I started around the edges, and I built through the middle, and I just stuck some some little legs up there, and and you know, yes, I'm 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 talented at what I do. I I can admit that, hopefully humbly, um, but it's 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 not about that for me. It looks good because I'm good at it to people. But when you do it and it means something to you, it doesn't have to look good for anybody. There's no standard or expectation you have to meet. It's just, it's just you putting your heart and, and memories and love into something and then putting it in your house and being happy that you did it and um, excited that you played with the flowers and all the happy things you thought of. So, you know, let go of the, the pretext that anybody's going to judge you based on your your floral design. If you want me to send you some hideous pictures of my early floral work, I'd be happy to do that. Just, just send me an email. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're all capable of making things that make us happy and, and they don't have to look any sort of specific way to please anybody other than you and, and put it in your house and let it make you happy and experience the spring. And there's grocery stores have flowers right now, local farmers. I think there's still some farm markets. Um, that you know, there's there should be some flowers. There's there's things blooming. So like I said, go scour your neighborhood. Please don't commit any crimes on my behalf. Um, but just you know, grab some things. And there, there's not a ton of stuff in here. And this is all Produce Junction. If you're in, in Pennsylvania or South Jersey, is is a really great resource right now. Um, and then when we get back to it, you know, obviously local farmers, local farmers, local farmers. And, and thank you, uh, Tamara and Julia for their beautiful flowers. Um, I think even one of these is from the outside the studio. We have some some daffodils that Eddie, my friend Eddie, who also made me this, uh, planted, um, and I pulled that from out front of the studio. So there's there's and today's the one year anniversary of when we moved in there. So there's just all kinds of happy right here uh, in this arrangement, amongst the fact that they're beautiful flowers. There's some really some good stuff here. Well, I do have one more other sort of logistical question here, which is I noticed you opened up the tulip, and I remember. When I, I think it was your um, bridal Sorry. day, and, and your sister-in-law said something about opening up um, carnations, and it blew my mind. I was like, wait, <laughs> you can open up a flower and have it, like, be positioned differently or show itself differently? So I just am wondering, like, are there particular flowers you'd recommend open, literally opening up like that versus not? Or, because I'm assuming some flowers, they would kind of fall apart. Yeah, some of them, anything that you have seen bloom over time will likely have some aspect of flexibility in which you can open them to a certain degree. And you've seen people like pick up roses and blow on them. Um, there's, there's flowers that will, and ta flowers are generally not as delicate as people think. Now, things like um, poppies, you know, they're, they're a little bit, um, you don't really need to open up a daffodil. Uh, but things like ranunculus, you can pull back the stems and really help them open up. Um, you can do that as you saw that tulip. I can pull this back out of here. So that tulip, when I pulled it out and started using it, was it's just a this is just a, a, a grown tulip. Um, but if you take, I'm just taking my thumb and tucking it behind and pulling back, and it's opening the petal. So some flowers, I mean, most of the time, and I think that's something that comes from flower shops is. Uh, people value longevity of flowers over the actual aesthetic properties, and florists would offer clients very tight um, flowers that hadn't really opened or bloomed because they knew that they were going to sit in their house for a week or so. So what we've been kind of trained to appreciate in a flower is, is a tighter, more closed flower, and people don't realize that there's a lot of flowers that, that can and will open up a little bit more uh, if given the time to bloom or, or um, forcibly done so. So there are, there are, like you said, some flowers that will that'll tolerate that. Roses are a really good one. Um, take off the guard petals, which are the outer petals usually, they're a little bit discolored, and then you do the first 
one or two rows and then you kind of blow on the middle a little bit. I don't have a rose with me today, but um, it's the same principle and tulips do really well. Uh, the ranunculus you can open up a little bit. Uh, even the anemones, sometimes they're a little bit tighter. Um, like this guy, you can see he's a little bit more closed as compared to this one, but they're really the same flower. Uh, they open up when they're warm, but you can also kind of help them out a little bit. And I'm using the same technique and kind of sticking my, my finger in there and just helping that guy open a little bit so you can see its face. You know, and you can manipulate flowers. Um, carnations are a good one. You see carnations that people think they're kind of cheap and stodgy, but if you kind of open them up a little bit, you can even pull out the centers. Uh, they have really beautiful centers and it kind of transforms the flowers. Now I can um, mess with the longevity just a little bit, um, but something like a carnation will still give you four or five days in a vase, uh, even after you've manipulated it. So um, some flowers tolerate it a little bit better, but you know, that's when you just, just get stuff and, and just stop at the grocery store or pick up, you know, like a, a multi bouquet of flowers and just play around with them. Just, you know, take some leaves off, move some things around and just really play with, there's nothing wrong with, with playing with your, um, with your medium, you know, as artists, you know, mix things with their paint and they try different formulations. And it's the same thing with flowers. You can really alter them and, and kind of turn them into mediums and, and pieces of art um, to, to work with. So it depends on just how kind of true the flowers want to stay too. Does that, so that help? Long-winded answer. <laughs> that does help. No, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, any other um, closing words you want to say? No, no. Um, check out our weekly flower delivery program uh follow us at ram floral uh no and, and i think it's uh, i love what i do and I'm, I'm really fortunate to do what i love um so if i can help anybody love flowers a little bit more or find a way to get through these difficult times i'm, I'm happy to do that and you know I, I i truly believe we'll all get there by getting there together and supporting each other and loving each other and, and doing our best for one another and, and taking care and protecting. So, you know, just, just take care of the people around you and uh, be as happy and positive as you can and uh, enjoy flowers, enjoy the spring, get outside appropriately. So whatever you're supposed to be doing, <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> no, that's it. Just, just enjoy it. I'm, I'm really thankful that anybody would even care to listen to me talk about this. <laughs> So thank you for being here and asking me. Well, thank you so much. This was awesome. And there's, um, you know, chats coming in, thanking you guys, thanking you as well. Um, no, I think it's adding this beauty to people's lives right now is really imperative. So I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And it definitely opened up my eyes. Um, and I think everyone's eyes to what's actually possible <laughs> for each of us to do with what we have on hand. So thank you so much, Becky. And I'll pass it to Susan. We always end with a quote. Um, and Susan will oh, set up today. Flowers changed my life, so I'm happy to, to, to share them with you. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, we always like to conclude our episode with the Mary Oliver quote, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? So with that, we, we end our show for today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow every weekday at 5 p.m eastern time or um you can always catch the replay but thank you so much becky for being here thank you stacy <laughs> and we'll see you all hopefully tomorrow all right bye bye everyone thanks so much